Okay, water, paper, and we're ready to go. So, why competition is completely irrelevant. And you should never think about competition again if you're a solopreneur or an indie hacker. Okay, and this is why I'm gonna, I'm gonna persuade you today. Okay, first of all, big caveats, right? Like, I'm not talking about, you know, the case where you're trying to build a billion dollar company and change the world, okay? Because I have no idea how to do that. What I'm talking about is like what I have managed to do, that's the only thing, which is like half a million to a million per year type of business. Up until that point, those businesses, I know, like even for me, two, three years ago, a million dollars sounded like the biggest amount of money in the world. But honestly, like in the grand scheme of things, these are considered small businesses. So if you're trying to build a small business, anywhere from 1K per month to 5K to 10K to 20 to up to 100K per month, let's say, you should never worry about competition. Um, why? First of all, another caveat. The number one caveat is like, okay, we're not talking about billion dollar share. We're talking about a million dollar company, max. And then we're also talking about, you know, the case where you're in a healthy market. And I have made a video about that, like how to identify a healthy market. You should go watch that video. Uh, but what I mean is you're in a market that is not a winner take all market and that you see many players winning at the same time, making the amount of money that you wanna make. Whether that's 1K per month, you see like many players make 1K per month. Whether it's 10K per month, you see many players make 10K per month. If it's a million per year, like it was in my case when I was looking for markets, I saw many players making a million per year. And there are a few markets that I have identified. Well, the last time I did that was like four years ago, but I, I found like lead generation was a nice market. Cybersecurity was another nice market. Hiring and recruiting was another brilliant market. Social media management and posting and automations was another brilliant market. So there are a few and there are many more today. Uh, but that's the second caveat. So number one, we're talking about small businesses up until a million per year. Uh, and we're talking about being in a healthy market. If you have those two things, okay, you should not care about competition. Okay, and you might ask why. Number one reason is that 99.9% .9 of your potential customers do not even know that you exist yet. And you might think that they do, or are you, like you're a big fish, but honestly, like jump into your analytics and have a look. Probably around one to 10,000 visitors visited your homepage. I'm not talking about blogs or something like that, like your, your homepage in the last month. If you're in a large market, 10,000 visitors is nothing. Okay, so instead of focusing on other people, focus on bringing more traffic to your thing. That's number one. Only you're stressing about your competitors that much. That's what I, I, I'm trying to, to, to say. You know all your competitors, but your potential customers don't even know them, right? Number two, even if they did know them, okay? Like, let's say you have a, you're competing with other companies, okay? I used to be terrified of competing with other companies until I started working for a company. And that's when I realized that companies are slow and boring and they are the least scary opposition. So I used to think that if a company is 50 people, I am competing against 50 people like me. And I was thinking, oh my God, that's impossible. There's no, there's no way I can compete against 50 people. I'm doomed. And then when I was working for a company, I realized that you're not really competing against 50 people. You're competing against 45 yes men and five people that are actually doing work. So you're not competing against 50 people, you're competing against five. So that's already not as scary as it may seem. And not only that, but those five people cannot move as fast as, you know, if it was just them five people in a dorm room, you know, at the university, just like coding all day, fixing and improving things. But they're gonna move slow because 
you know what it's like in a company, you know, like people, they have their tasks in the to-do column, they have to move them to done, they're going to take a week, they're going to move it to block, they're going to throw it to another department, try to change the requirements, try to request a meeting, you know, like in many cases they need to have five meetings to change like the color of a button, whereas a solopreneur or an indie hacker can pivot 180 degrees in one day, you know, like I can be in my underwear and I decide, you know what, I'm going to change the positioning of my product today and I can just do it in five minutes. So companies are not scary, you know, like all these people, those 45 yes men, I'm not saying it as a knock on them, I was one of them, you know, like it's not their company, they don't care, they have their own dreams, they have their own aspirations, they have their own problems, you know, they might have problems with their family, they might have sexual problems, they might, who knows, you know, but they don't care about their family, about the, the, their com the company. So that's number one, don't be afraid of companies either. I'm more afraid of someone like me competing against me than a big company. Number two, uh, well, whatever, number N, I don't even know where we are now, but okay, so companies are not scary. Uh, now, even if you're competing with someone, like how do, how do we define competition? Because this, I used to think about this a lot. How do we define competition? Is it having the same product? Is it having the same distribution channel? Is it positioning in it the same way? Is it having the same price? What is it? In my opinion, it's a combination of four things. So it's the product itself. So let's say two products are identical, okay? That's not enough for them to, to be competing. Then it's the target customer. Like you can have two different SaaS, the same SaaS product, but one of them is selling to SaaS companies and one of them is selling to agencies. Are they competing? No, okay? The third is the positioning and the pricing. You might even have the same product and the same target customer. Let's say it's, it's a SaaS that is, is uh, the target customer is agencies, okay? And then it's the positioning and the pricing. That's another thing, you know? Like, okay, one of them might be like very low end, self-service, you just come in and you pay and it's like $9 a month. And the other might be the same product, but it's high end and it's like custom made for you and there's an onboarding process and it's almost kind of like a service, let's say, or even there might be a, a full-blown done-for-you service on top of the software. And it costs, instead of $9 a month, it costs like $999 a month. Are these two competing? Not really. So let's go a step even deeper. Let's say you have same product, same target customer, same positioning and pricing, uh, and then you have different acquisition channel. So let's say that one of them is advertising on Google ads and Facebook ads, and the other one is advertising on Twitter and Reddit, or posting organically like on Twitter and Reddit. Like are these two people competing? Not really. It's only if you if all these four overlap, where I, I, I would agree with you that you are actually competing with someone. Uh, and a, a metaphor I would use, I don't know if it makes sense, but like off the top of my head would be like fishing, you know, let's say there's a river, the market is the river, okay, and I'm fishing here, and you come right next to me, and you fish right next to me. Okay, and you have the same bait as me and the same, the same nets and whatever. In that case, I would say, like, dude, go opposite. There's plenty of fish here. In that case, it's stupid. You're just bashing heads. But most of the time, that would not be an issue, right? Uh, most of the time, you're not really competing against other people. You're competing against intangible things. Like, let's say for cyberlies, many times what I'm competing against is them hiring a VA or them doing it themselves, like I'm competing with different things, but not my competitors, like boredom and an Excel sheet, you know. Um, yeah, so those are my reasons why I think you should not care about competition at all. Like there's so many ways to escape competition, and even if all overlap, like there's enough room for everyone. And th the last thing I wanna, maybe I can draw this. There's a final point. This, I was thinking about this like last month, I think. Let me see what color should I do. So my favorite meme 
my favorite meme is the midwit meme. And if you don't know the midwit meme, it's a normal, um, it's a normal distribution. And on one end, it's a very dumb person. And on the other end, there's a very smart person. And in the middle is the average Joe that overcomplicates everything. And in many cases, the smart person and the very, very dumb person, they are doing the same thing. And the middle person overcomplicates everything. So in this case, many times, most people that copy your idea, this is actually super interesting. So I used to get way more copycats when I was at 1K MRR or 2K MRR or 3 or 4K MRR than I do now at 40. Way more. Now no one, I don't really get any copycats anymore. I think because people visit my website and these types of people used to copy me. These most copycats are like this, are here. And these people, you should not be afraid of these people. Usually they quit within two months, okay? These people are too scared to copy a product that is making 40K per month. Because they feel like, oh, that's, they cannot do that. And then they see like amazing testimonials. They see that I have 40K followers on Twitter. And they're like, you know what? I cannot do this. Whereas when I had less followers on Twitter and I had way less revenue, people would copy me all the time. So these people, you should not be afraid of these people. These people in the middle, you should not really be afraid of these people either. These people usually don't copy. These people overcomplicate everything. They want to be, I was here for a long time. They want to be unique. They want to find a unique angle. They, they overcomplicate everything. Copying someone is way too simple for them. Okay. And then you have these select people here. By the way, copying a product is a great strategy. Okay. Maybe I do it in my next business. I'll just fucking copy someone. That's it. You get all everything ready, made. But usually these people are not going to copy your business. They're going to copy a business way better than yours. Because your business is not that good, typically. So, by explaining these three types of people, you'll see that probably you have nothing to be afraid of. These people are going to quit within two to three months. These people are not going to copy you, probably. And these people are going to copy a way better business than yours. And even if this guy copied you, which is worst case scenario, whatever, the market is big enough for more players. So that was my brilliant depiction of that. I'm not sure if you could see anything, so I'm going to bring this closer here. And I'll call it a video now.